Hey everybody, I am headed to the city hall to give my very first state of the city address. I've got my good luck cup of tea. What could possibly go wrong, right? Actually, I was supposed to be there oh, about 10 minutes ago, so I'm kind of in a hurry. But the good news is I get to talk about all the things that have happened in Cedar Rapids over the last year, plus some of the cool ideas we have for the future. But I'm gonna need a lot of help. I got a few people to pick up along the way. Are you going to City Hall? I am. Can I catch a ride with you? Hop in. Awesome. So you're a you're a lifer. You're I am. A lifelong Cedar Rapidian. What do I need to know as the lucky new mayor? Yes. About Cedar Rapids. I just think getting more. I mean, obviously we're in business, so that's what I that, that that's the first thing that comes to my mind, and that's. Um, helping make sure we keep businesses here because we want to attract more people here whether they're moving back to Cedar Rapids or they've never even been to Iowa but they want to go work for that company how do we get people to want to live here and work here um, and then mostly how do you get businesses to want to have their business here so that we can attract those people so are you excited I am excited you know it's it's interesting I liken it to being a kid who gets the keys to mom and dad's car Oh, because I do feel like this is such a unique time mm -hmm. when we have opportunity in terms of funding, in terms of ideas, in terms of the right people. It's like the stars have aligned. Yeah. So I got the keys to the car. Where are we going to go? Yeah. You know, I love that. It's really, I feel like it's up to us. Yeah. In the past, we've had, you know, barriers, natural disasters, after natural disasters sort of get in our way. Right. And right now, knock on everything yeah um, we can really focus on moving forward yeah that's awesome hey Rama hey, I'm great how are you Good. need a ride yeah. hop in going, going to City Hall hey how are you? yeah going my way you? yeah Good. so yeah tell me what are you planning on talking for the oh. you know, state of the city state of the city yeah there's so much to talk about Rama I get to talk about all the cool stuff that happened last year correct and then I get to talk about all the stuff that we want to do awesome that yeah. is so, so awesome what do you want me to say what do you want to know I just want to know about maybe I mean I mean your vision when it comes to the, the different ideas and inclusion you know considering you know our Midwestern values Midwestern values, and you're from Tanzania. Yes, right? I am. I am. Okay, yeah. immigrants are important to to Cedar Rapids. You know that. Yes, uh, definitely, definitely. How are we doing in terms of inclusiveness? Are we an inclusive community, and and how can we be better? Time are changing. You know, time are changing. Communities are changing, and even how we define success in within our community is also changing. So I think at this point is actually is to go grassroots and, and engage with this, um, uh, these communities. Engage them in, in a very meaningful way. And, and, and for me, you, you know me, for me, I'm going to look at how do we support them in economically, like how will people do well and how people feel welcome and, 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 and all these other ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Housing and jobs. Housing and jobs and, 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 and the education system, like, you know, for the kids, because we have to prevent some of these challenges from becoming generational. So we have to address those. And, and once we address those issues, I think we're creating a very vibrant community. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Hey, there's my friend Steve. Why aren't you on your bike? I rode this morning. You already rode this morning. In I the snow? I ride here around. This city is so good. It clears the trails. There's no snow on those trails. No snow. It's amazing. It is amazing. And you know, trails in this community are just, the history is fantastic. Uh, Lynn County Trails and the Regional Planning Commission and all of those folks have done such a great job of creating a base. And if I understand, that's what people look for these days. Well, and this is what I was gonna ask you. When you started, you, you've been on trails forever. When you started Connect CR and, and all these great ideas for our, you've always had great ideas for our trails. Did you ever imagine, and maybe you did, that trails would be a key component of economic development? I had no idea and my trail riding started probably 50 more years ago and when my wife and I, Bonnie, rode across town we thought it was a huge deal and then of course comes Ragbri and now this community has been investing in trails for so many years and and you know the future mayor is something that 
I know you're aware of that uh, not only are trails important uh, locally, but we have two national trails that are going right through Cedar Rapids. And uh, so people are going to be looking for a place not to just ride across the country, but to start. And when we give them the new trail bridge and Cedar Lake and what have you, uh, it'll be a place to start uh, to have a trail adventure that can go anywhere in the United States. So coast to coast? Coast to coast. Wow. How about that? That is awesome. Little old Cedar Rapids once again. Hey, I think I see my friend Joe Sample. Let's be like Joe. Let's be like Joe. Hey, Joe. You need a ride? I brought car treats. Oh, oh right. right. I never say you're in donut land. Oh, this is nice. nice. going to church. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. What do you have? We got donut land donuts today. Uh, donut land. Is there variety. anything better? No. Yeah. No. So you guys want some? Yeah. I'm trying to quit, sure. thanks. Yeah, I got to have Oh, one. look. Do you want sprinkles? Or oh, red I'm gonna velvet? Take, I'm going to take a little red velvet. Mm. A little red velvet. Ooh, Ooh, there delicious. You Thank you, Joe. So, Joe, I'm heading to City Hall to do my State of the City address. And, you know, one of the things we hear about that's just really happening right now in Cedar Rapids is our restaurant scene. And you're all about restaurants and buying local. What do I need to know as mayor? Well, a lot of people out there needs to support these restaurants, you know, and keep them going. Um, you know, what I like to try to tell people is try to try a new restaurant once a week or twice a week. You know, something you've never been to before. So, you know, businesses need new customers to succeed. So, just like any type of business, a restaurant needs new customers as well. So, I think that's the key is getting those people out there and trying something new each week. So. Are you surprised that? It's grown so much, the restaurant industry, the offerings. I feel like every week we're getting somebody new. It's crazy, crazy. I mean, I've been to over 200 restaurants myself here since the pandemic. And I, oh. I bet you before that I've probably been to 15, 20 in my whole life. And I've lived here my whole life in Cedar Rapids. So it was amazing to see how many restaurants there are in Cedar Rapids and how many great ones we have. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Our town is just thriving with restaurants. The new ones are open up all the time. So And these are local? Yes. Many, most, the majority of those are all local that I've been to, so. That's so great. Time is now. Welcome to the Cedar Rapids State of the City. I'm Tiffany O'Donnell and I'm proud to be your mayor. Thank you for putting your trust in me. I really do feel like I've been given the keys to the car and I'm excited to see where we can go together. Before going any further though, I want to send a special thanks out to our city manager, Jeff Pomerantz, and the most dedicated and talented staff that he's assembled. We're lucky to have each and every one of you on our team. In addition, staff works collaboratively with our elected officials, our city council. Thank you to Mayor Pro Tem and Poe, council members Marty Hager, Pat Leffler, Scott Olson, Tyler Olson, Scott Overland, Dale Todd, and Ashley Van Orney. I look forward to working with all of you to build on all of your hard work. This past year was certainly full of challenges for all of us throughout the struggles of the pandemic, and then, of course, the derecho, Cedar Rapids continues to persevere. This community has not just survived. We've shown enormous strength and growth in so many ways. Our city definitely looks a little different, but our resolve remains. There's much more work to do, and we are up to the challenge. Rarely in history has a city had the opportunities that we have right now in front of us. The opportunity to make generational and transformational change, to leap forward toward a better, brighter future. The influx of pandemic recovery money, federal, state, and local infrastructure investment, and the strength and generosity of our private sector have all made available unprecedented resources for us. We can make tremendous progress quickly if we have the courage to aim higher. The time is now to think big, during the campaign, I heard loudly that good enough isn't good enough for us anymore. I learned that many of you are visionary. You know what great looks like. Let's be visionary and strategic together and use this once in a lifetime opportunity to make a once in a lifetime difference. Our time is now. 
Our neighborhoods are the backbone and what makes our community a home. Walkable, bikeable neighborhoods aren't just a goal in our unprecedented and groundbreaking community climate action plan. They're becoming a reality in front of our eyes in places like Time Check, the District, Check Village, New Bohemia, Mound View, Wellington Heights, the Northwest Neighborhood, and others. It's because neighbors are driving community, building bridges, holding each other accountable to creating neighborhoods where all can be successful. Each neighborhood in Cedar Rapids provides its own unique personality and perspective. The city encourages strong neighborhoods by supporting the work of our neighborhood associations, and we will be leaning into them even more. City Council and Department Directors will continue to work with the city's many neighborhood associations to help strengthen these connections and ensure that all residents in Cedar Rapids feel a sense of belonging and are safe where they live. Our city is incredibly fortunate to have a police department that is so responsive and collaborative. As a citizen and now as mayor, I'm grateful for our local law enforcement. Due to leadership in the department and with our community partners, public safety for all, by all, is a priority. I'm proud to represent a city that sees value in a citizen's review board. A police department that is increasing its mental health support in policing is seeing promising results from an innovative group violence intervention initiative. Like cities across the country, we still have work to do to ensure that all are and feel welcome. But when you use both the empirical data and your own eyes, you can see that we are blessed to be right here in Cedar Rapids. We'll continue to see that challenging discussions and progress can be made simultaneously in a spirit of camaraderie and cooperation. As mayor, one of the unique roles I have as a member of our city council is promoting and encouraging economic development. I will continue to focus on how the city can support the companies that make Cedar Rapids the force that it is. Our existing companies are our best resource for growth. Expansion projects at Collins Aerospace are great examples of that. And in 2021, expansion of International Flavors and Fragrance, which was formerly DuPont, and Sadler Powertrain facilities highlight how many sectors continue to thrive even during these challenging times. For me, job one as mayor is ensuring that Cedar Rapids companies keep their current address. Of course, to achieve the growth we envision, there must also be new projects as well. Some big wins in 2021 were the FedEx Distribution Facility and Allro Steel Corporation. Last year, a total of 16 projects received city council approval, amounting to more than $354 million in capital investment. These created 517 new jobs and retained 329 jobs. The total valuation of all building permits for the calendar year in 2021 was $663 million. That's the highest valuation in Cedar Rapids history. Of course, some of that is from derecho repair and recovery, but the top 25 building projects, representing about 43% of the total reported valuation, includes both public and private new development. Continued public and private project investments in our community, including residential, educational, industrial, retail, and commercial development, have positioned Cedar Rapids as one of Iowa's top tier cities for construction growth. I'll share one of the more visible and exciting projects. The development at First and First West has been a long time coming and is a cornerstone in reimagining and re-energizing our downtown core. It's unique for a city to have such a large high profile location available for development at this point. And it was important that the city attract just the right anchor for the area. Plans are in place to create a showcase entertainment and mixed use destination for residents and visitors to enjoy all year round that will spur additional growth Growth around it as well. Work continues behind the scenes to bring more projects like this to our incredible community. These are the types of developments that our residents have wanted and that we need to attract the workforce of tomorrow to Cedar Rapids and keep the people we have here. For us to achieve the growth that we envision, we must also have more housing, affordable and market rate. We're seeing the creation of new housing options added to our community, which is critical to support any plan for growth. My focus remains infill projects in and around downtown, and we are on our way. The Banjo Block development near the downtown library will transform an area that has been in need of new life for many years. The Watts redevelopment adjacent to Bruce Moore, the redevelopment of the Terex property, and the Hatch Development Brickstone Project are all projects that will yield major improvements to key districts and the city and add a diversity of options for residents. In 2021, the city added 639 new residential units, including 90 affordable units. 
Separate from infill projects, areas like College Community will add to our competitive advantage to the south. Others on the northeast side will add to the growing business and amenities there. A variety of housing at different price points, including affordable housing, will continue to be an important focus for City Council and staff as we build a city that is welcoming for all. Recreational opportunities, amenities can define a city, attracting visitors and providing fun outlets for residents. These features set the stage for community growth. As we look forward, we have several game-changing projects just around the corner. One exciting example is the Alliant Energy Light Line, which will be a new signature pedestrian bridge connecting Czech Village and New Bohemia. The name reflects lights designed on the bridge's rails and pylon that will be powered by Alliant Energy. The bridge will provide a unique element to Cedar Rapids' segment of the American Discovery Trail for pedestrians and bicyclists. It will also create a unique signature feature on our river for future generations to enjoy. The project will include plazas on both sides of the river that provide historic interpretive exhibits and gathering spaces. The west side of the river will include a connection to the recreational amenities at Mount Trashmore. The bridge will not only connect to vibrant destinations, but will also add recreational amenities along the riverfront. The light line is part of the Connect CR project, which is the largest public-private partnership in Cedar Rapids. The project includes plans for revitalizing Cedar Lake with accessible canoe and kayak launches, fishing piers and amenities, a pedestrian boardwalk over the lake, an obstacle course, and improved trail surfaces. This project demonstrates the best of Cedar Rapids by providing valuable quality of life elements through partnerships with private businesses and community groups. Lynn County voters approved a gaming referendum again last year, and the city will continue to follow through with efforts to build a casino in Cedar Rapids. As you know, it will ultimately be up to the State Racing and Gaming Commission to give us the nod. The city will be out front in the meantime advocating for Cedar Rapids to be the destination for this potential new attraction. I'll note that our nonprofits, who will receive 8% of gaming revenues, are making plans to help as well. The casino is only one piece of this amenity puzzle, though. We will continue to support our growing network of trails and 96 parks, including a new clubhouse at Ellis Park. This is where I also put in the personal plug for more dog parks. Who's with me on that one? We cannot talk about the future of our river without dealing with our past. And the city is committed to putting the floods of 08 behind us as soon as possible. Despite funding from the Army Corps of Engineers only being available for east side projects, the city has always been committed to completing much needed work on both sides of the river. Last year, the city allocated $10.2 million of our ARPA funds to help speed up flood protection in the Northwest neighborhood. Design concepts are underway to elevate O Avenue Northwest over the levee, serving as a gateway to the greenways. We're looking forward to seeing the West Side project work accelerated, as well as flood protection work all along the river. Flood protection is critical for our city's economic future, and getting the work done quickly is a top priority. It's not a question of if it will flood again, but when. We're also moving forward from the derecho natural disaster. There is not a neighborhood that was spared. It took generations to grow the tree canopy that was lost in just minutes. It'll take generations to grow again. The time is now to plant the seeds for future generations to enjoy and benefit. The city worked with Trees Forever to develop Relief, a plan to guide restoration of the tree canopy in Cedar Rapids. Not only was the tree loss in Cedar Rapids unprecedented, but this type of work and dedication to restoring the canopy has never been done before. The relief plan demonstrates a commitment to rebuilding a resilient canopy that preserves citywide plant diversity and distinct neighborhood character while striving to limit climate change, increase social equity, and encourage volunteerism. It targets the needs of the city, institutions, nonprofits, large lot owners, and residents with tree planting education as well as information. More than 42,000 trees will be planted along Cedar Rapids streets and in city parks. The plan outlines how we will grow our canopy back better and smarter with results that will benefit residents for generations to come. All of these great plans require a united and welcoming community. Without that, we go nowhere. 
Cedar Rapids has come a long way and leadership recognizes the need to continually be better, more inclusive, not just in words, but in action. While there's much work to do, a new diversity, equity and inclusion manager is now a member of the city team. Her work alongside city officials and most importantly, you as community members will ensure a positive way forward. It's a powerful first step. Real success rests on all of our shoulders. I'd like to thank Cedar Rapids residents, the business community, my fellow city council members, city manager Pomerantz, and of course, city staff for all of their work in 2021. And I'm so excited to work together over the next four years to really step on the gas and accelerate our progress. Together, we can create a city beyond what any one of us could imagine alone. We all must have a sense of urgency to work together to go where we want and need to be as a city. What we do today will shape tomorrow. We have a very real opportunity to build a better, brighter future for all of us and for generations to come. Our time is now. I challenge you to be unabashedly enthusiastic about our city. I know I am. We say it to ourselves all the time, how lucky we are and what an awesome place this is. Why not shout it from the rooftops for all of America, heck, all of the world to hear? One of the keys to growing our workforce and continuing to expand our business base is making sure the world knows how awesome this place is. Join my voice in making sure we are all heard. The time is now to think big, to think about what's possible, not what's been lost, to recognize the opportunities right in front of us and build a better future for all of Cedar Rapids. The time is now to put the pedal to the metal and really get moving forward. So let's get in the fast lane, friends. I got the keys to the car, hop in, let's go. Thank you, Mayor O'Donnell, for your State of the City of Cedar Rapids address. And thank you to everyone for joining the League of Women Voters and the City of Cedar Rapids for this virtual State of the City event. My name is Bree Oxley and I'm a member of the League of Women Voters of Lynn County. I have been attending League events with my grandma since I was young. And as a government and social studies teacher, I believe deeply in the League's mission. This is the 39th annual State of the City for Cedar Rapids by the League of Women Voters and the second year it's been virtual. The League began holding the State of the City for Cedar Rapids back in 1983. And for the first few years, it was actually held at a downtown Rotary meeting. Through its transformation and support from our community and sponsors, the event attendance grew over time and has been held at the downtown Doubletree for more than 10 years. The League of Women Voters envisions a democracy where every person has the desire, the right, the knowledge, and the confidence to participate. The League promotes that mission and vision through events like this, as well as legislative and candidate forums. On March 19th, we'll be holding our next legislative forum with Lynn County's elected representatives. This will be a participatory virtual event where attendees can submit questions beforehand for the legislators on the League's website. If you'd like to learn more about the League of Women Voters and our upcoming events, visit us at lwvlincounty.org and follow us on Facebook. A special thanks to this year's event sponsors. Our gold sponsors, Mid-American Energy, Alliant Energy, Cedar Rapids and Iowa City Building and Trades, Shuttleworth and Ingersoll, and the Greater Cedar Rapids Community Foundation. Our silver sponsors, Simmons Perrine Moyer Bergman and Collins Aerospace. Our bronze sponsors, HR Green and Hawkeye Area Labor Council. Thank you again, Mayor O'Donnell, and thanks to everyone for joining this 39th annual League of Women Voters State of the City Cedar Rapids event.